All right, welcome back. It's been a year and a half. Yeah. It's been a very long time. Very long longer, time? Longer than we had planned it. A lot of trips, a lot of fun. Yeah, I finally got him out of the country, so. That's true. That was gold mine. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so let's go ahead and we'll, we'll, we'll rewind time back to 2022. When we we uh, we'll start with the Library of Congress. So uh, this was my first trip to the Library of Congress. Yeah, I got a I got a card, which was cool. I re- and I renewed mine because um, I'd been before. Yeah, you had been before. So we got to go in and see the main reading room and see a lot of the documents that they have in there, which you can with you, with a card you can take them out and um, re- read through them um, in in the library itself, which is really cool. Um, there's a photography exhibit that was really cool. Uh, we saw the Great Hall. Which was awesome. Yeah. Um, we also saw Jefferson's original library. Yeah. Which was awesome. Yeah. Lots he, of historical items in there. Yeah, he uh, sold his library to Congress to start the original Library of Congress. Cause yes. Thomas Jefferson needed money, so. Fair. We also saw the Gutenberg Bible, which was really cool to see that on display. Um, That's the main reason why I dragged him there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we got to look at some very old books, yeah. uh, which was really cool to see the, the generations of different, like, encyclopedias and stuff like that. Like, yeah. super old ones. Yeah. And this would have been it's back cool. in October 2022. And the last time I had been was pre-pandemic. So, it had been a while for me. My old reader's pass had expired. Yeah. That's fair. And, uh, we also went to the National Archives that day, which was a lot of fun. Um, the National Archives in Washington, D.C., where we saw the founding documents, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, which Nick Cage stole in um, National Treasure 1. He stole the Declaration of yeah. Independence. I don't remember why, but uh, great movie. It was very fun. We also saw the Magna Carta and uh, President's Exhibit, which was really cool. Yeah, and the Magna Carta was a 1297 copy of the Magna Carta. Right, it wasn't the original British uh, copy. Because the, the original copy, they don't know where it is. Yeah. It's probably honestly destroyed because it's been 800 years. So the Plus, 1297, there's six copies from 1297, and that's the earliest copies in existence. It would be kind of weird if we had the original, just Why? since it's a British document. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. And we're pretty good friends with them, so I feel like if we had the original, we'd be like, all right, here you go. You can, you guys can keep this. But uh, since it's a copy, even though it's the first copy, I'm not, I'm not really feeling too bad about that one. But yeah, that was really cool. Um, He'd never been. It wasn't super big but it was definitely full of a lot of information a lot of good information yeah. very cool to see the documents Within the last couple weeks apparently some of those like i think it was those climate protesters um maybe it was food i don't know if some sort of protesters decided to dump red liquids on the cases that enclose the that u.s founding documents yeah not great um so moving on still in to- october 2022 Uh, We went to the National Firearms Museum, where we saw guns from, jeez, a couple hundred years ago, maybe even farther back than that. Yeah. Um, They had firearms from Annie Oakley, John Wayne, Buffalo Bill. um, Does that say JFK? Yeah, it says JFK. Okay. Uh, Nancy Reagan. um, Oh, the Rossi gun badge and photo from uh, Rossi from Criminal Minds. That was cool. He. I've never uh, seen Criminal Minds, but he geeked out when he saw the Rossi badge. Yes. He's in, he's been in a lot of other stuff, too, but that's where I remember right. him most from. Um, there was a Star Wars gun, which was kind of cute. Uh, there was a cannon, a Gatling gun, um, Civil War uh, Civil War guns, which was, was really fun to see. Uh, Revolutionary War American firearms as well. So it's cool to see the progression of firearms through the generations. Um, they also had some taxidermied animals there. They had a bear, a lion, a ram, a rhino. Um, yeah, it was very cool. They had an entire, like, Hollywood section of guns, where it was, like, these are guns, like, I mentioned, like, Rossi from Criminal Minds, but, like, from other shows and stuff, um, that were used in those movies and things of that nature. And it was huge. There's, like, this is just, like, top level, like, oh, yeah, it exists. Like, you know, this was not, um, yeah, this was not, like, everything in the museum at all. By any yeah. stretch of the imagination. And I was really surprised that they had the taxidermy animals there. Yeah, I'm wondering if those, pro- those were probably hunted by somebody. Yeah. Um, it's run by the NRA, so I assume that this yeah. is probably hunted them. Yeah, it was very cool. Um, let's see. So, I know we're just we're firing through a lot of these, but some of these places, like, it was like... A year and a half. There time. were a couple things that were there, and, like, 
well, it was an awesome experience. You know, I don't have, unless I'm going to talk about more like, oh, how were the guns built? Were the manufacturer things of that nature? Or like, oh, how did the build rights come about? You know, it's kind of just kind of like, yeah, we saw it, right? Like that was awesome, but like yeah. that's an entire another conversation about what it was. Uh, but yeah, we'll just keep going. This is this is fun. Um, so then in October, uh, we went to the Teddy Roosevelt Island, um, which is in Washington D.C. Uh, it's really cool. There is um, a uh, statue of Teddy Roosevelt and a couple plaques talking about him and some of his famous quotes and things of that nature and his philosophy on life, uh, which was really cool. Um, what is? I can't read this. Uh, views of D.C. and nature. Oh. Um, and they have a really like. It, you can like a lot of hiking trails there. Yes. Uh, and there was a site of a of a um, ruined mansion, which was cool. And some of the DC views that you could see included uh, the Kennedy Center, which is a performing arts center. They're actually going to be soon. Uh, one of my coworkers was telling me this. They're going to be having the Broadway cast come down and do the Book of Mormon. Um, and also the, recently they had the Broadway cast come and do Frozen. Um, oh, and you had really cool views of the Watergate there, which is where the whole, like, Richard Nixon shenanigans happened. I think it was Nixon anyway. It was Nixon, right? Yes. Okay. It was, uh, under his administration yes. that occurred. Um, yeah, it was, it was beautiful, lovely walk. Uh, we hiked around there for a while. That was fun. It was very, very nice, very relaxing, very uh, peaceful, and yeah, good place to sit down and just think. Yeah, and a cool fact about that island is... So, were you done? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, the he said that it was only... It was it was in D.C., and yeah, it's true. The island is in the Potomac, which is... And so, everything... Like, the Potomac is technically owned by D.C. It's part of D.C. But the only way you can access it is through Arlington County. So you have to park in our, like, there's a parking lot in Arlington, then you cross a bridge, and you're, as soon as, like, you're on the bridge, you're in D.C., and then, yeah. Yeah. So then we, uh, later that month, we went to the Fairfax History Museum, which was really cool. They had a lot of different information on the history of Fairfax itself, um, in terms of, like, major families there, different um businesses that came and fell etc things of that nature which was interesting to read about um they also had a good exhibit on virginia black soldiers um which is often for uh in some areas often forgotten in terms of like you know civil war and revolutionary war and etc i mean granted it was more civil war than revolutionary war to be fair because that was when a good majority of them were actually fighting but there was still some even earlier on um, yeah i remember so the official name was the U.S. colored troops in the Civil War. Yes. And I didn't even know if that was a thing until I was in college. Um, when I took an African-American history class and I was like, oh. I didn't know that was a thing. And I was just mind blown when I was in college about that. Yeah, I had heard about it in like middle school, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I knew black people had fought, but I just didn't realize it was like fought. Yeah. I just thought it was a couple. For yeah. whatever reason. All right, so, um, yeah, I mean, it was an interesting museum. Um, really, uh, outside of, if you're interested in Fairfax history itself, then it's not going to terribly much interest you. But I thought it was interesting. They showed a lot of different people that grew up there and, like, how they were there for generations, and it was very fascinating, yeah. in my opinion. Um, but we'll keep moving forward. So now we're in November 22. Uh, we went to the James Monroe Museum and Library, which was very cool. Um we saw, I cannot, oh, I can read her handwriting. It's sometimes hard, but uh, much easier to read mine, but that's okay. Well, and then I have a lot of trouble reading his handwriting because it's like handwriting. So we saw the clothes that they wore to Napoleon's coronation, which was actually quite cool. Um, there were a lot of books that were period appropriate, um, which, you know, we don't always have books from these people. So they try to sometimes just be like, hey, this is what they probably had or something similar to what they might have had. Um we saw a lot of furniture, including the desk where he wrote the Monroe Doctrine. And there was a lot of artwork of the Monroes, which was cool. Um, it was very interesting. And, like, the staff at all these places was always phenomenal. Whenever yeah, we'd ask and questions. That, and that's great. in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Yes. Um, and I thought it was really cool because, well, we'd been to his house in Charlottesville on our honeymoon. So it was just really cool to go to another 
Yes. So uh, next up, January 23, 2023, we've moved forward in time again. Uh, we went to the Valley Forge National Historic Park over in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, which while en route, I think it might have actually been in King of Prussia that we had some of the best Mexican food Yes, it ever. was one, it, Plaza Azteca, and it's in King of Prussia. Oh, yeah, we need uh, to go back there. That was great. Yeah, and the reason we were up there is because that week was my birthday. My yes. birthday's February, in early February, but we just put out of January, beginning of February. And so we went up to Philadelphia and surrounding areas. So yes, this so was our first stop. We saw the Ver- Baron von Stu- Steuben, Steuben, Steuben? Steuben. Steuben, excuse me, mem- monument. Uh, the National Memorial Arch. There were huts, redoubts. There was a statue of General Wayne. Washington's headquarters was uh, was there. I, I mean, presumably um, not necessarily the same any facility, but uh, at least a monument, yeah. like, replicated kind of deal. Um, and, of course, the Visitor Center. Um, yeah, it was, it was interesting because we got to walk around there and kind of see um, kind of what it might have been like. I mean, obviously... Um, we're not there at the worst of the temperatures, but it wasn't exactly the best temperature either. We were there in January. It was cold. <laughs> Probably wasn't as bad as, as it was for them, though, the actual soldiers. Yeah, time. because they weren't, we didn't live out there. That's true. Um, but yeah, it was, it was beautiful. Um, it was interesting. We got to learn a lot about the Baron. We learned a lot more about George Washington and his troops there, what they ate, um, how they survived, the little clothing that they had, etc. Um, rough conditions, to put it lightly. Yeah, and, um, yeah, so Steuben is the German pronunciation, but Steuben is the Americanized version. So if you're ever in Steubenville, Ohio, which is named after him, it's Steubenville because America. Yes. All right, do you want to take us to the next place? Sure. Because I can't read this. All right, so, uh, we went, next we went to the National Independence Park in Philadelphia, And we went to the um, outside of the Declaration House, which is where Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. We only went outside because it was closed the day, like, when we were in town. So we were like, okay, let's go outside. Uh, And then we went to what remains of the President's House, because originally, before D.C. became D.C., the President lived up in Philadelphia, and that's where George Washington lived, as well as... No, I don't think John Adams lived there. Because I know John Adams did live in the White, White House and it wasn't finished yet. Um, and we saw the Liberty Bell. And there were some exhibits there. I was so excited to see the Liberty Bell. Yeah, that was cool. Because um, I'd always wanted to see the Liberty Bell. And we saw the uh, Congress building. So we there were lots of cool things like original chairs and paintings of Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI. Um, who had helped America or Americans during... Um, the American Revolution. Uh, and we saw the Christchurch burial ground. It was uh, closed. Um, it's closed during the winter. But we were able to just, like, walk over. Because we were able to, like, walk. There's, it's a, there's a gate and a fence. So we were just able to walk around it. And from the road, we were able to see ben, where Ben Franklin was buried. Uh, and we saw Independence Hall. Both, uh, like, both, both sides of Independence Hall. Both, like, the court and document sides uh, and well there is a have the original inkwell of the declaration of independence and copies of the uh copy of the articles of the confederation and george washington from the constitutional convention which was also held there about a decade later and uh there was we got good food from campos i think that's the where we ate philly cheesesteaks that was your first philly cheesesteak uh, yes that was my first philly yeah. cheesesteak I had a, um, some kind of spicy Philly cheesesteak from there, and it was yeah, delicious. I personally think Philly cheesesteaks are overrated, but I was I'm like, hey, I'm in Philadelphia. I should get myself a Philly cheesesteak. I will probably never eat a Philly cheesesteak again, but at least I had one, and I, he's mad at me. Uh, so, also... Um, Keep in mind that we were in Philadelphia for a while, so we're going to be sticking to Philadelphia yes. for a little bit. Um, we went to the Ben Franklin Museum. And that we saw lots of his sayings and his inventions um, and pictures of his family and a wax statue of him, as well as various busts and paintings. And we ate dinner at McGilligan's Old Ale House, uh, which 
Siegfried had never had a real shepherd's pie before. And he had, like, those was, like, microwavable ones before. So he ate shepherd's pie for the first time. He really liked it. And it was colored green because that was right, like, the week before. We were there about a week and a half before the Super Bowl. Who won the Super Bowl? I don't remember, I don't remember who won either. the Super Bowl. I think the Chiefs, no, the Kansas City Chiefs won. The only reason I can tell you that is because this year, 2024, the Kansas City Chiefs also won the Super Bowl, and it was back-to-back Super Bowl championships. The only reason I can tell you that is because Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. They beat the, the Eagles by three points. 38-35 in 2023. Um, Good thing yeah. we weren't in Philly after the Super Bowl. That would have been in would have been a hot mess. Anyways, um, um, we did step out of Philly for one day. Yes. Uh, we popped over to Camden, New Jersey. Um, where we got a private tour of Walt, M- M- Walt Whitman's house. Yes. And we, we saw his, uh, his grave, along with graves of other family members. He's not buried at his house. He's just buried near his house. So he popped over there. But at his house... Uh, it was a, for the last house he lived at for the last decade or so of his life. We saw a, a, lots of photos of him and his house and his family. Um, statu- he had lots of statues of Grover Cleveland, who was uh, one of the U.S. presidents. Only president not to serve consecutive, consecutive terms. Consecutive terms. Uh, who, was, who was elected a second time. Yeah, so he served two non-consecutive terms. Uh, there were draw- lots of drawings of him, Tom- or Thomas More, who was... Uh, English Chancellor back during the reign of Henry VIII, uh, Abraham Lincoln, and we saw his, uh, he did an inside bathtub, which was cool, uh, not super common at the time, and gas lamps, there was, had an inside kitchen, again, not super common, but the bathroom was still outside. Like, he had a bathtub inside, but he had to go to the bathroom outside. Uh, and there was a bed, and his room was really messy, and, oh, I'm probably butchering this, o- Osela? Osela? Native American leader in Florida. Um, and we got desserts at Dol Buenos, which was actually recommended to me one of my one of my college friends who is originally from... Uh, this was in uh, Camden, New Jersey. My friend didn't live in Camden, but she lives near Camden. Um, and we got Italian food for dinner. So that was my birthday proper. Uh, we, we mainly went for... Philly, but we're like, hey, knock off another spate while we're at it. Walt Whitman, famous poet. So then we went back to Philly because we were staying in Philly at the time anyway. So it was yeah. like easy to pop back into the city. Um, and we went to the Independence National Historic Park again, but for different reasons. This time we went outside Carpenter's Hall um, because the inside was closed because apparently there was arson in December 2022, uh, just about the time the renovations had finished. So that was not great. Yeah. And the reason that we broke up the national park again or into two spots is because we didn't realize there had been arson, and we had read on one of the on a pamphlet that had been printed free arson <clears throat> that it was spo- that Carpenter's Hall was supposed to reopen on February second while we were there, and we we're like, oh, that's so cool! We can like be one of the first people there. Uh, spoiler alert: we were not because, like he said, arson. Yeah. Uh, and we saw Christ Church, where lots of famous people attend church, like Ben Franklin, John Adams, uh, Betsy Ross, and George Washington. Next up, we went to the Museum of the American Revolution, um, same day. We got to see Washington's tent, actual tent. They have it in a specific environment. You're not supposed to take pictures, things of that nature. You can't go up and touch it, but you can see it, which is really cool. There is a replica statue of George the Third. Um, there's parts of the Liberty tree. We saw a lot of guns, um, uh, musket balls and rope that the soldiers would have used at the time. Um, tea that would be similar to what was thrown in the Boston Harbor during the Boston Tea Party. Um, photos of old participants of many of the revolutionary events. Yeah, there were like 90. Yeah. No, not 90 photographs. Like there were 90. The people in the photo were 90 years old. Yeah. Um, which was really cool. Um, obviously there was an orientation video, which kind of just went over like, Hey, here's what the revolution was all about. Here's what happened in Philadelphia. More importantly, since you know, you're in Philadelphia. Um, yeah. And it was, it was very cool. Very nicely done. Uh, very cool place. Um, so then we went to Delaware, 
um, this is home. just about, yeah, just about when we were, we were, we were on the way home. So we were like, Hey, you know what? We're on the way home. Delaware, Delaware's on the way home. Why not stop off and see what they got over there? So we went to the Delaware history museum where we saw a lot of discussions of black history, including the first black immigrant, uh, slash, well, more accurately slave, but, um, his name was Anthony. Um, the 13th and 15th through 15th amendments were not quite enforced as much as they should have been, uh, at least for a while there. Um, there was discussions of the American Revolution. Um, I, I can't read the next part, hun. Oh, Especially right. uh, Caesar. Uh, Caesar Rodney, who was one of okay. uh, delegates, or the delegates from Delaware, uh, he rode through the night. He was the deciding vote um, and for the Declaration of Independence. And a legend boat piece from Washington crossing the Delaware. Um, the reason that they focused a lot on uh, Black History was because we were there during Black History Month. Yes. Because, um, yeah, if you were there, in, it was at this point, it's February, in February. Because we, we went on this trip lasted from January 30th to February 3rd. And if you're not from, I don't know. If, other countries besides the U.S. do that. But at least in the U.S., February is Black History Month. Um, what did you... You said probably not? I don't think other countries do it, no. Yeah, I... I don't know. Uh, probably not all. But I wouldn't be surprised if some do. But probably not as much as here. And probably not in February. Um, yeah, that's also fair. But anyways, uh, so that was the Philadelphia trip. So moving on, uh, we're jumping towards March 2023 now. We went to Andrew Jackson's Hermitage. He was one of the U.S. presidents. So this is Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, we saw tombs of their fa- of his family. Um, who's Alfred? Alfred's Alfred. Captain. Yeah, Alfred was a former slave that lived there post Civil War. Okay, that's what I thought. He, but I didn't he wanna... was a slave, and then with the Civil War, he became. Free. Okay, that's what I thought. I just didn't want to say that without, with, you know, if I was wrong. Uh, we saw their garden. We got a house tour, which is 82% original house. They made sure to stress that on the tour. Yeah. Um, you know, as these things do. These houses are very old and things fall, fall apart, etc. Fires, what, not, what have you. Um, we saw swords. or Actually, I think it was just one sword, but I could be wrong. We saw his glasses. Uh, we saw New Orleans Pocket Watch, because if you don't know anything about Andrew Jackson, he's very famous for running the Battle of New Orleans in the War of 1812. Uh, which put an end to that. Well, it wasn't the deciding factor in terms of a battle for the war, but it was a big, it did have a Im- big impact in terms of how the treaty was enforced because the British were very clear in, well, the way they phrased the treaty, they could have put up a stink if had they won the battle for New Orleans that they could have kept it potentially, or if they had taken over the city, would they have even left, you know? So uh, he kicked out the British from taking New Orleans and they promptly left Louisiana. Yeah, um, and he preferred to be called general instead of president. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was a very, very interesting look at yeah. his life. We also learned, or at least I learned a lot about how, uh, his, his family matters, like his wife who had a rather atrocious first marriage. The husband was a real scumbag. Um, and so she was going through a divorce when Jackson and, the, and her get married. Apparently, technically, legally, she was still married to the other guy. They thought she had gotten the divorce, and so they got married. She got accused of bigamy. I mean, technically, it was bigamy, but, like, she legit thought she wasn't doing bigamy. Right. And um, so, yeah, she's accused of bigamy, and Jackson takes insult directly from this. And is like, hey, you know what? That's my wife. Let's have a duel. Because you're, you know, trashing my wife in public. Like, we're having a duel over this. Um, I don't, I think both of them survived the duel, but still that shows how much Jackson was yeah. like, you don't screw with me or my family. And the reason we were doing this trip is because we were celebrating his birthday and we were driving from our house out to the Alamo. And speaking of General Andrew Jackson's exploits at the Battle of New Orleans, we will be visiting, we visited that later in the trip and we will get to that. So next up, staying in Tennessee, we went to the Johnny Cash Museum, which was very cool. Yeah. We saw a lot of his outfits for his performances. And this all, is also in Nashville. A lot of his records, like the actual vinyl. Uh, a lot of pictures of him, tickets for his performances. A lot of objects that he owned, like a family piano, a microphone. Uh, talked about his military service, his collaborations with other artists like Elvis. Um, 
a lot of the music that he did, he did a lot of covers of other artists as well. And the major thing that was interesting was he had hits in six consecutive decades. One of the most successful, really, musicians of all time, yeah. at least in America, anyways. Um, yeah, and so after that, we're, we were still in Tennessee. Um, this time we were in Memphis, though. We moved on from Nashville. Um, we went to the National Civil Rights Museum, where they discussed how Martin Luther King Jr. was, was assassinated. Um, whether or not James Earl Ray did it, and if he did, how it potentially could have been done. Um, there was also talk about slavery and economic impacts, um, pre- and post-Civil War. Um, yeah. We saw the outside of the motel where Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, and they also had an exhibit on white supremacy and uh, things like the KKK. Um, and yeah, so actually, the um, part of the part of the motel is closed now, but the museum itself is in part of the motel. Yes. And at the outside of the motel, uh, you can see um, the, the, they have a wreath to memorialize exactly where he was uh, standing when he was shot. And you can go across the street. Yeah. And uh, go in the exhibit where Sigfrey was talking about the did James Earl Ray do it or not. Um, you there you could see um, the room where he allegedly took the shot yeah and it was really interesting uh they have a similar exhibit at the sixth floor museum in dallas where jfk was shot um allegedly shot from yeah yeah um we didn't we'll get there in a minute with the whole, yeah but yeah uh the interesting thing here was they did have an entire like exhibit where I was like, okay, what if it wasn't James Earl Ray? Here's a couple other theories and evidence in each direction, whether it was James Earl Ray, whether it was potentially the FBI or other government agencies, or whether it was potentially even a third option, maybe someone in MLK's uh, orbit that was jealous of the attention he was getting, or, hey, he's taking the movement the wrong way, you know, we got to get rid of this guy so we can take it this other direction. So they, they pre presented evidence for each path and were like, you know, we really don't, we'll never probably know the truth, but, like, there is evidence that points to multiple different theories, and it's it's hard to say what truly really went down. Or, the third option, right, James Earl Ray might have done it, but these other groups might have been angling for it themselves, and either helped him, or had their own plans in place, and then he did it, and they're like, oh, cool, we don't have to do it anymore, right? So it was interesting, because I, I fully expected going there with them to be like, hey, it's James Earl Ray, like, screw that guy, but they were very much like, yeah. no, we don't know, um, and, like, here's here's concern from MLK's family himself, their family being like, hey, we're not even sure, right? Like, we want to keep investigating these other things and keep this on on, on the forefront as much as we can and, and see yeah, if we can I, figure it out. Yeah, it only, I only found him out in the last couple of years that within the last, like, five-ish years that, at least me personally, maybe the information's been out there longer, but me personally, I didn't realize until the last five-ish years that the FBI had a whole, like, thick file of Martin Luther King Jr. Like, yeah. Yeah, they were know, spying on him for a long time. Yeah, like, I didn't realize that until I, I, think well, was... I mentioned that African-American history class that I took in college. We obviously covered Martin Luther King Jr. And, yeah, that's how I found out about it. That was my senior year of college. I was 21 before I figured that out. Yeah, Hoover, I think it was Hoover at the time. Yeah. He did not like him. Oh, oh, J. Edgar Hoover. Yes. I thought you meant Herbert Hoover. No, I, was like, I thought Hoover. Herbert Hoover. FBI Hoover. director, yeah. Yeah. My... The FBI was corrupt from the start. Hoover was a huge scumbag. He collected a lot of evidence of wrongdoings on behalf of pretty much everyone in politics. And he had a lot of skeletons in his closet, too. But because he could blackmail everyone else, they couldn't get rid of the man. Yeah. Yeah, my brain... Thought you were talking about Herbert Hoover. And Anyways, like, well, Herbert Hoover? like yeah. that doesn't make sense. But yeah, Jay Edgar Hoover. So we're gonna we're gonna try to uh, keep moving because I'm hopeful we can get through the uh, the trip before we, we close the video. But it just kind of depends on how long this goes. This might be two portions. So I'll let you talk about Graceland. I uh, also in Graceland. We or well, also in Memphis. We went to Graceland. That is the main reason why we stopped in Memphis. Uh, if it had just been the Martin or the, the Civil Rights Museum, I probably wouldn't have stopped because at a later time in the trip we do go to the church one of the churches that martin luther king jr was pastor at so i was like eh. like main reason we went to the civil rights museum is because we got a graceland ticket in the afternoon and we're like oh we sure want to do something in the morning and we're like hey civil rights museum why not um 
and so we went to Graceland, and if you don't know, that is the home, uh, the mansion of Elvis, and fun fact, it is the second most visited house in the U.S. after the White House, um, which we've also gone to, um, and so we saw videos of him in concert, we saw the plane Lisa Marie, which is named after his daughter Lisa Marie, who had actually just died about two-ish months before we got there. Uh, there was a, we saw the house, including the trophy room, lots of family stuff, the jungle room, which was just kind of a crazily decorated room. It was awesome. Um, and we saw a racquetball room and I made sure to text photos of the racquetball room with my grandpa because my grandpa loves racquetball and my late grandmother, his wife, was obsessed with all this. Um, and we saw his grandma's room, the family room, their dining room with, with China and the kitchen. Um, and there were horses and you can also sign a brick wall, uh, with your name. And I also made sure to sign my grandma's name because like I mentioned, my grandma, my late grandma was utterly obsessed with Elvis. She once told me that, uh, if she hadn't married my grandpa, she would have tried to marry Elvis. And we, we saw graves of my grandma or not my grandma, his Elvis's grandma. Um, Vernon and Gladys, who were his parents, as well as Brandon, who was one of his grandkids. Um, uh, and we saw Lisa, or the grave of Lisa Murray, his only child, as well as Elvis. And I left a photo of my Elvis-obsessed grandmother, uh, because we had what, planned on going to... Graceland before she died we talked about going when I graduated college but then she graduated or she died <laughs> my junior year of college so we didn't get to go so I made sure to leave a photo of the two of us there well yeah, actually we actually it had my cousin in there so there were three of us me and my cousin and my grandma but important the one most important thing is we brought your grandma yes and there was a memorial to Jesse who was his twin brother who I forget if the brother was still born or Died shortly after birth, but either way, um, there's a memorial there. And I was very, very, um, I just forgot, I almost cried. Just very, just like, wanted to go there. Um, and if you ever go there, if you have AAA, make sure to use your AAA discount because it saves money. So, yeah, that was cool. Yeah. And then the next one we drove um, to Arkansas, and we that was our first time at Arkansas. Well, yeah, it was both of our first times to Tennessee too. And so. our our plans got abruptly changed, but uh, we don't really need to talk about that too much. But we we had to change plans, so we decided to go to the Arkansas State Capitol. Yeah, we thought about plan originally going to the Bill Clinton Presidential Library, but for reasons we had to change plans. Um. So we went to the state capital of Arkansas. And, and the Supreme and Court. And Supreme Court, yeah. Um, and at the Supreme Court, we saw uh, the Supreme or the paintings of the various justices. And we learned that the Supreme Court of Arkansas is elected and you can serve up to two terms. It's, I didn't realize that was a thing. Like, you could elect the Supreme Court of your state. I don't think we do that here. I think it depends on the state. Yeah, we don't do that here in, in our state. So, or our commonwealth, as I should say. Yeah. Um, so I just didn't even realize that was the thing. Um, and we took a tour of the Capitol and we got to see both chambers and the, uh, state Capitol was, uh, the, the state legislature was not in session, nor was the Supreme Court. Um, and I like to tease Siegfried that he visited the Arkansas state Capitol before he visited our state Capitol. Um, and we saw the vault for the state treasury, um, where we got to hold $600,000 in cash. Yes, and we got photos, so... And we're on their website now. Oh, I forgot that they put them yeah. up on the website. So, yeah, we're on the website of... Wherever they host the pictures. I don't yeah. remember offhand. Uh, we saw the lieutenant governor's office, and uh, we saw a really old three bronze doors. And the old, they only even opened twice. I don't remember why they got opened twice, but... Yeah, so we also saw the old state room, or old or Supreme Court of Arkansas room... The old, uh, they're the chair, or like super old chairs though too. And there were mem various memorials outside the Capitol. Uh, Gold Star families, Civil War Memorial, Confederate veterans, Confederate women, 
firefighters, Medal of Honor recipients, including Douglas MacArthur. Is Douglas MacArthur from Arkansas? I don't remember. Okay. Because I know Douglas MacArthur is buried. There's a Douglas MacArthur Museum down in Virginia Beach. Um, and he's buried there with his wife. I've been there. Did I ever tell you about there? Mm-hmm. Okay. And there's also the statue of the Little Rock Nine there, who are uh, civil rights leaders. I guess you can call them. Um, they helped yeah, just yeah. dis- desegregate Little yeah, Rock. Yeah, apparently Central MacArthur, Island. according to Wikipedia, and I don't usually use Wikipedia as a source, but uh, according to that, he was born in Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, look, Wikipedia is a great place to start, and I like to mind the footnotes on Wikipedia, personally. And search it's it. been getting worse and worse over the years, though. That's why I like to check out the footnotes and see where they're getting their information from and see if their sources are repeatable or not. Um... So, and then we went to Little Rock Central High School. We were there on a Monday. So, and of course, Monday is the one day of the week that they're closed. For tours. For tours. The school, the school's still an operating high school. So we got to, we just visited the outside. Which honestly wasn't too bad. It was, it was still nice. Yeah. So we just parked the car at the visitor center, which like I said, was closed. Um, so we parked our car at the visitor center and then we walked across the street and stood on the sidewalk outside the school. We're like, cool, took a picture, and left because, well, we didn't want to disturb the school. Yeah, there's a little memorial garden. Uh, there's a memorial garden. Um, it's like across the street from the school. Yeah, there's a bunch of statues outside. It's, I was surprised at how big the school was. Yeah. All right. Um, and then... We hit Texas. Texas. I've been to Texas before. Neither of us had been to Tennessee or... Arkansas before, but I've been to Texas before. He had not. So we made it to Dallas, Texas, which is actually where you had been in Texas before. Yes. Um, and we went to the George W. Bush Presidential Center. Yeah. And it's part of the Southern Methodist University campus, which is a university in there. Uh, there's an exhibit on 9-11. There's a replica Oval Office. Where you can get pictures, which was good. Yes. Cool. Uh, we got pictures. And we had various outfits of theirs and, like, baseballs and bats. And um, gifts that President Bush received on either... For himself or on behalf of the country from all around the yeah. world, different countries. Generally, these gifts are not just for the president. They're for the country. So he's receiving it on behalf of America, essentially. Yeah. Um, so that was very cool to see. And the he, the reason they had a lot of baseball and baseball bats, because if you don't know this about the younger Bush, he loves baseball. Yeah. Um, not Jeb. He never became president. Please clap. <laughs> That always gets me, like the meme of the jump saying, please clap. Um, and there's photos of his family. Oh, I forgot that there had a copy of the, Mag- the 1305 copy of the Magna Carta there. Yeah. Um, and a copy of the Declaration of Independence and the Gettysburg Address and signed and dated by Lincoln. Um, oh, and we get the 43 Cafe there. Uh, we normally try to like get local food. And the reason that we ate there is because everything we, is sourced from everything Texas. is sourced from Texas. Um, and they try to keep it to the Dallas area. But if they can't find something from the Dallas area, they go in Texas. Um, yeah, and, oh, we eat nearby at Pokio's Ice Cream. Um, yeah, shout out to Pokio's in, te- in Dallas, Texas. No, those ice those are the biggest ice cream cookie sandwiches I've ever seen. I couldn't fit it in my mouth. It was, it was so big. It was amazing. I wish I had more of an appetite because I, I couldn't finish the damn thing. It was so big. I think yeah. I missed a page. Dealey Plaza. We didn't yeah, talk about Dealey Plaza. I was going to flip it over. Oh, you're looking at the Elmo. <laughs> yeah, I just haven't okay. flipped the page yet to this one. Um, so, Dealey Plaza also in Texas is where JFK was shot. Yeah. And assassinated. And they they have the sixth floor um, window open to mark where... Yeah, so you can see where it is, uh, where, where the was. shooter allegedly and was. There are X, three X's to mark the three shots, because there were three, three shots. Mm-hmm. Um, and... <clears throat> they had a sign who marked where the Sapruder film spot was. That's one of the, the most famous recording of JFK's assassination. Um, and you can see the grassy knoll where there's a second shooter. Yeah, an alleged second shooter. Um, because, again, much like Martin Luther King Jr., there's a lot of interesting details that went down that make it plausible that there were other things that were going on. Either there was a yeah. second shooter... Um, maybe it wasn't, uh, I can't remember the guy's name offhand, but maybe it wasn't him in the sixth floor shooting him. Lee Harvey Oswald. Thank you, yeah. Um, Uh, so there's a lot of questions, and they did a decent job of being like, hey, here's where the supposed second shooter was. 
Um, oh, yeah. So they, they did point out both of them, which I thought and was the, nice. Uh, the museum itself, the 64 museum, is, is closed. Yeah. But I had been there back in, I went with my dad back in 2014. Uh, and I went to both the Presidential Library and Dealey Plaza with my dad. Yeah. And so when I went to the museum, uh, they it was like a b- bunch of info about JFK, and they had a small section about not as big as the one in, for for uh, Martin Luther King Jr., but they uh, did do have a smaller section about various other conspiracy. Uh, well, they call it conspiracy theories, but other various other conspiracy. Various other theories of theories what could have gone down. Have, that happened, and the payment wasn't working. They said they were gonna send us a bill in the mail, but they never sent it to us. Yeah. Uh, so, ooh, you should talk about this one. So, this was the crux of this entire trip, right? Going to the Alamo, which was somewhere I've wanted to go my entire life. Um, so, we finally make it to the Alamo. We make it to San Antonio, Texas. So, we've driven through Texas a bit more. Um, and we saw the church at the Alamo, which is the first thing you see, basically, is these walls and a church. And you go in, and you're like, man, this is a really small mission, like church, right? Um which was surprising me. I'm like, oh, the Alamo is a lot smaller than I thought. But then when you start walking around and you start turning the corner in the in the actual Alamo area, it's like, okay, this is actually a lot bigger. Still smaller than I mentally imagined. Um, but I think it's just because of the feet of what went down there, right? Um, I don't remember the exact numbers, but the Texans that were at the Alamo fighting off the, the Mexican army, it, it was not even, like, close. It was, like, more than two to one, I think. Yeah. Um, uh. And they, they held their ground for quite some time and put in a huge dent. And basically, because of the battle at the Alamo, they were all killed to the last man by the Mexicans. That rallied the rest of the Texans into a strong vigor, and they would went, go on to win their independence and become the Texas Republic. Um, so we also saw statues from people from San Antonio, which was really cool. There were memorials to those who died at the Alamo. Uh, there were statues of several of the leaders um, at the Alamo as well. We also saw the barracks, which apparently is the oldest building in San Antonio. And... Um, we got to listen to some some people talk there about hey this is kind of like things that they would have made at the time they had old machines to like sewing machines i think it was uh yeah um and they were actually making like actual things that they would have made at the time which was crazy um and i gotta shout out uh justin's ice cream because my friend one of my my closest friends is named justin uh <laughs> so that was cool we got to eat at, at there but yeah the elmo was awesome it was it was very awe-inspiring just to see this place and be like, wow, like, I can't, the, the courage that these men had to be yeah, here and, think, and fight what they thought was the right. The thing that surprised me the most is that it's in the middle of downtown San Antonio. Yeah, that's true. It's not, like, off to the side of the city. It's, like, I, you're literally walking through the city and all, all of a sudden you're in the Alamo. You're like, what? How, yeah. how did this happen? Yeah, I just was like, what? Um, so, yeah, that was awesome. So, next up, still in San Antonio, we went to the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Little Flower, um, which is a Catholic saint. Yeah, so, yeah, um, St. Teresa of the Zoo. Roman Catholic, I should say. I mean, the other Eastern Catholics were recognized as a saint, too. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, I'm a Roman Catholic. I'm not an Eastern Catholic. I don't yeah, really know that, what they do. That, that's why I was letting you know. Okay. That's why I said thanks. Um. So we saw the church, which was really nice. Um, there were statues of St. Therese, St. Anthony of Padua, John Paul II, and in the Infant of Prague. Um, and we also made a note that there, the stained glass there was absolutely beautiful. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's gorgeous. I don't know how people make stained glass, and it just, it's insane. I mean, I know how it was made, but I'm just, like, in awe of their skills, you know? Um, so we'll, we'll keep going. We'll keep moving forward. So then we went, went over to Beaumont, Texas, uh, to the Chambers House. Uh, this is, again, in March, mid-March. Uh, we saw paintings, uh, by Florence. F- Florence Chambers? Um, and 99% of the stuff was owned by the family and the cottage for the cooks. Uh, so the Chambers how, or, were a wealthy family at the, at the, in the early 1900s who lived in Chambers, or not Chambers, in Beaumont. Um, and it's kind of funny because the, uh, employee, or the employees who checked us in to the museum, they were, uh, saw, and we saw in the guest book and they were making small talk and be like, oh, where are you from? And we're like, we're from deep, like. Or the Virginia DC area, and we're like, they're like, we're shocked. Yeah. Because we're so far. And then, yeah, that's true. And then we moved on to Chalmette, Louisiana, to the Battle of New Orleans that we were talking about earlier. So it's in a suburb. It's a suburb. And it's also the Chalmette National Cemetery. So we saw both sides. Um, 
we saw the outside of one of the houses there. We saw the redoubts that were built there. Um, there was a monument with flags. Um, we saw the canal and ditches. We learned about the black community that lived in the area because um, that area and New Orleans in general is very much, especially at the time, it was very diverse. It had French immigrants. You had um, black immigrants from Haiti and other countries. You had Americans that were moving in at the time. Yeah. Um, I think there were a couple other groups that were there too. But yeah, it was, it was a mishmash of a whole bunch of different groups. Um, we got to see the Mississippi River, which was beautiful. And like I said, we did we did visit the cemetery there. Yeah, because the GPS took us to the cemetery. and we, Which is right next to the battlefield. So like, it wasn't like we were super duper off. It was just kind of yeah, like... it was like a tenth of a mile. This off. is not the battlefield. <laughs> Uh, but it was nice to see the cemetery. It was very yeah. nicely, and nicely done. we ate our first po' boys when we were in New Orleans. Yes, that was fun. Uh, we never heard of po' boys before. And then uh, we popped over from Louisiana to Biloxi, Mississippi. You want to talk about this one? Sure, yeah. Um, so in Biloxi, we went to the Beauvoir, which is the home of Jefferson Davis, who was the... The first and only president yeah, of the, the Confederate States of America. Yeah. Um, in his house, and there was a bunch of artifacts there, including a gold harp. It's just one of, one of the few gold harps in the world. And his coat and his uh, writing writing stuff. Um, and artifacts from soldiers. A library and a giant purse. Portraits and statues. And the main room has no corners, which means it cost a lot of money. Uh, and his wife and his sister become a hospital. Uh, and then after that, for Confederate soldiers, or post-Civil War. And then after that, it became a museum. And uh, for ice cream... Afterward, if you noticed, we like ice cream. Uh, we ate at Boomtown for ice cream. It was the in the mall. It was delicious. And it was the home of the cow patty. Yes, I had a cow patty. It was awesome. Uh, one last note I'll, I'll make on Jefferson, uh, Jefferson Davis, because they did mention the, the writing writings and writing room. Um, he wrote extensively about the Confederate States of America. Um, he wrote a couple, I think it was two or three volumes on the rise and fall of yeah, the, the Confederate two. government. Um, he also wrote another one. Uh, which is more like a condensed version yeah. of the history of the Confederate States of America and his interpretation of what the founding documents of America meant and why the Confederate government was formed the way it was, etc. So if you want to read one perspective from the opposite side of what you normally read, then, then he, yeah. he did very detailed. Um, and it's from one of the major leaders of the Confederate government, right? Literally the president. He didn't run for president. He didn't want to be president. They selected him. They showed it to his house and were like, hey, you're president. you're president of the Confederate States of America now. He's like, excuse me? Let me go talk to my wife for a minute. And then comes back and is like, all right, cool. I'm in. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. And so next we went to Alabama. And Oh, by the way, neither of us had been to Louisiana, Mississippi, or Alabama before. Um, and so now we're in Alabama. And we went to Montgomery. And we saw the Dexter Baptist Parsonage and Church which is where Martin Luther King Jr. was pastor. Uh, there were some unpublished photos. Uh, we got a tour of the parsonage uh, by a lady who had actually been a kid at the church when Martin Luther King Jr. was pastor. And we got a history of the property. And uh, so the parsonage had been bombed at one point And we got, they showed us where like the bomb was and everything. Yeah, because someone... Um... Obviously, Martin Luther King Jr. was a very divisive figure at the time, um, and someone took a took a bomb and tried to blow him up, and thankfully, by some miracle, no one was injured. Yeah, everybody was injured. I should say they weren't seriously injured. No one died. Yeah. Because I think there were some injuries, but it wasn't, yeah, you was know. It? No one died, which is unbelievably amazing. Yeah. They are not sure who threw the bomb. Um, if I recall correctly, it was an angry mob of locals, not like, it wasn't like, I don't think it was a... Um, I don't think it was like a directed assassination because of, you know, I think it was more local problem. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I, I can't remember, so don't quote me on that. Yeah. And the uh, church had a mural that depicted various scenes from the civil rights movement and Martin Luther King Jr.'s life. And uh, we had a dis discussion of his career and the civil rights. And yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, yeah. All right, so uh, next up, we went to. Um, Georgia uh, and Tennessee again, uh, Chickamauga and Chattanooga battlefields, they're like right next to each other. Um, so we saw both battlefields. Um, at Chickamauga, we saw the Wilder Monument and another monument um, 
to, to soldiers there and, and whatnot. Um, we saw the Union Gap site. We saw Confederate breakthroughs. Um, so basically where the battle went back and forth, right? Um, we saw the battle lines, which was interesting. Uh, we saw where the Confederate uh, States of America general and... United States right, President Breckenridge. He was vice president? Yeah, of the U.S. Wow. And then he became a CSA general. Interesting. Um, where he, where there's an assault site at Chickamauga, which is in Georgia. And then we went over to the Chattanooga battlefield, which again, these are like right next to each other. So it was quite funny, actually. Uh, they're, they're not far drives at all. Yeah, it was like um, maybe 15 minutes. Yeah. We saw Lookout Mountain at Chattanooga battlefield, which had absolutely stunning views. And again, a lot of more monuments of like, hey, here were monuments to the soldiers that fought here on, on both sides generally. Although I will say it was a lot more union focused, which makes sense because, you know, the union won the, the war, et cetera. Um, um, yeah, but still, it, it was nice. It was touching for both sides. I think they, they tried to be like, hey, we disagree with the Confederates, but we still understand that they were our fellow countrymen at one point. Um, and so it's devastating on both sides that people were killed. Yeah, and so I had driven through Georgia before, but I'd never done anything in Georgia, and it was his first, his first time in Georgia, period. Yeah. Uh, then we got back to Virginia. So uh, now we're in southern Virginia, Lexington, Virginia, and we went to the uh, VMI Museum. Yeah. Virginia and... Military Institute? Yes. Virginia Military Institute, uh, where a lot of famous generals uh, had attended school or taught. Including a bunch of Civil War generals. Yes. Uh, we saw some old guns, a lot of rings from years past, um, you know, memorial rings for different classes, things of that nature. A lot of old uniforms for the soldiers, uh, which was interesting to see how those over time developed. Um, uh, and is, Andrew, or not Andrew Jackson. Uh, Stonewall Jackson. Stonewall Jackson. A stuffed horse named Little Sorrel. Yeah. Uh, we saw a lot of paintings of different battles and soldiers over the years. Um, we went by G uh, Stonewall Jackson's grave. Um, I don't think we could go in at the time. We did see Lee's burial place through the glass doors. Again, not, not open at the time. Um, but still interesting to, to even just see from Yeah, from so the, the reason... So, um, there, Andrew, or, uh, Stonewall Jackson is buried at a cemetery in the town of Lexington. And Robert E. Lee is buried at Washington Lee University, and the Washington Lee University is literally right next to VMI. You can walk from one end of v the the far end of VMI to the opposite end of Washington Lee, uh, in half an hour. So yeah. it was like, hey, and that here, let's go. That wrapped up the birthday trip, the road trip. Um, we're going to jump into April and then I think we'll, we'll call it an episode here and we'll, the end, at the end of April? Okay. we'll, we'll start up again with, uh, okay. with after that. So we went to, uh, Richmond, Virginia to the capital of Richmond, uh, capital of Virginia. Uh, and we saw the Capitol building there. Um, we, there were statues of Washington, um, busts of some other presidents, uh, Virginia presidents, of course. Uh, there's a statue of, uh, or, uh, excuse me, a bust of Lafayette who helped fight in the American Revolutionary War. And was good friends with George Washington. Yeah, it was a bust of Sam Houston. Fun fact, he's most famous for being a Texan, but he was born in here in Virginia. Yeah, Sam Houston did a lot uh, in his lifetime. He was, he is the only for, uh, former foreign head of state that ever served in the U.S. Uh, Congress. Um, because he was the president of the Republic of Texas for two terms. Uh, separate terms because according to the Texan constitution, you can only be president for one term, um, at a, at, or excuse one, me, one. you could not have two consecutive terms. So you could be reelected to president, but you'd have to wait at least one term. So he was the first and third president of, this, of the Republic of Texas, um, with one president in between that. Um, there are paintings of past governors. Um, there were old Senate and house chambers, which, uh, what does it say? Uh, and the those chambers had also been used for the Confederate okay. uh, Congress during the uh, Confederacy. There were busts of a lot of famous Virginians. Um, then we did see the current State and House chambers. Um, they were in session at the time. Um, and we also stopped by the Library of Virginia, which was very cool. Yeah. And then uh, also in Richmond, we went to the Richmond Battlefield. And we saw the Tredegar Ironworks. We got to see the James River. Um, artifacts, including clothing, swords. Um, a lot of 
different, you know, battlefield memorial memorabilia, the standard stuff you'd see. Yeah. It was very, very well done. Um, and then we saw a teapot from the trade affair. Yeah. And so, yeah, that concludes our... Oh, wait. We also visited the... If you flip the page. We've also visited the Petersburg battlefield that day, too. So we did a lot that day. Yeah, this oh, was okay. one day in April. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll finish with that. Sorry, I meant to say that. Um, we saw the earthworks, uh, a lot of artillery pieces, which was really cool. They had clothing, they had railroad tracks, they had reproduction of... The United States color troop flags. Um, yeah. And, uh, again, standard battlefield information, like, hey, here's what happened here, and, and all that, which was very fascinating. All these battlefields are really, really nicely well done. Um, but yeah, I think that's what we'll stop for now, and then we'll pick this up with, uh... Later! May! May 1st. Alright. Uh, May 1st being the next, uh, date and time that we, uh, took a trip. Alright, until then, have a great one. Bye! Bye!